Welcome to a new video. This one's going to be a little bit strange, mostly because I am really procrastinating on starting my 18th century stays. I am intimidated by them and I think I'll figure it out once I get started. It's just kind of scary to start. So in the meantime, I had a pleasant distraction this week because I acquired a new sewing machine and I thought it might be a good time for me to take you on a tour of my sewing machines because I actually have received two in the last month, two antique sewing machines. Plus I have two other antique sewing machines and of course I have my modern machines. So I thought it would be fun to take you on a little bit of a tour and tell you my plans of having my sewing machines kind of brought up to snuff so that I can use them and enjoy them. So come along with me as I take you on a tour of my sewing machines. This is a machine that you've seen in my other videos. This is a Janome New Home DC 5100, and it was my upgrade machine. So I had another machine for a really long time and wanted more options. I wanted to have some choice of stitches. I wanted some computerization. And so this was my next step up, not terribly expensive, maybe just over $400, um, but it gave me a lot more of what I was looking for. And I have been very, very happy with this machine. It's not super duper fancy, but it does everything I want it to do and then some. So came with all kinds of attachments here. Um, and then I ended up buying a set of 32 additional feet that work with this machine and my other Singer machine. And again, this is one of those things that I will probably explore with you at some point and show how each of these works. But there's a gathering foot, there's cording feet, there's a free motion foot, things I don't even know what they are. There's binding feet, five groove pin tuck foot, a foot for putting on beadwork, all kinds of stuff. So that is this machine. And I do pull these out at various times as I'm working on projects. And I highly recommend getting one of these multi feet set. Even if you have an older machine, as long as it's the right kind of feet for the way your machine works, like this is a snap on foot and I have this snap on mechanism here for my machine, then yes, I highly recommend buying a set of these and it will expand your capabilities. So this machine I've had for, I'm trying to think, I've probably had this machine eight years now, which is, it's funny how time just flies. And especially with the pandemic, it's hard to keep track of, of the time that's gone by, but I think probably eight years. And I have been absolutely thrilled with this machine. It's been great. This is my OG machine. This is the one I received about a year after we got married. I got it for my birthday. And just for reference, we got married in 1994. So this one dates to 1995 and it's hard to believe that is 26 years ago. Uh, actually it'll be 26 years ago this month in June. So my husband gave this to me and I have absolutely learned everything I needed to know about sewing on this machine. So if you're looking to start sewing and you feel like you got to get the fancy computerized machine, I will tell you, don't do it. Don't spend a lot if you are just exploring it because the last thing you want to do is buy a really fancy machine and then end up not using it. So all this has on it is a zigzag and a straight stitch. You have three needle positions. You have a couple of different stitch patterns and a buttonhole and a very basic, you know, stitch length adjuster. Um, it's all analog, no computerized anything on here. And this machine has done everything I've ever asked it to do with the exception of those fancy stitches, like the embroidery stitches on my other one. I was ready for an upgrade, but only after I had been sewing for a really long time. This machine still serves me well. It's easy for me to take it places because my other machine here is all set up on my sewing table. This one's in a portable case, so I can take it if I want to go someplace and sew with friends or something like that. That's why I've hung on to it. I also do give sewing lessons sometimes, and this machine is just a lot easier to teach somebody on than the fancy machine. This is a Burnett for Bernina Funlock 004, and I actually bought this on Craigslist. I've probably had it for, well, probably at least 12 years at this point, but I don't even know how old it was. I'll have to see if I can look it up and if I can figure it out, I'll stick it on the screen. But I bought this on Craigslist. 
I got this machine plus about 35 cones of thread and the manual and all the stuff that goes with it, a couple of books for about $150, I think, which was a great deal because this thing has run like a champ ever since. It's filthy at the moment, but you know, it's pretty basic. There's not a whole lot to it. And at one point I thought, oh, you know, it's an old machine. I, it's probably at least 30 years old at this point. I probably ought to look at investing in a new one since, you know, I know how to surge now and I like having a serger. What I discovered is that the new ones, once you open them up, are the same as the old ones. And sometimes an older machine just is a lot better deal than the new ones. They, they have metal parts, they just last a little bit longer, they run a little bit better. So I kept the old machine, but what I did do is buy this set of Juki presser feet for the serger. And Juki and Bernina are the same under the cover. So this set of serger feet lets me expand the way I use the serger without having to buy a brand new one. And I don't remember, these were not terribly expensive, but this gave me the capabilities I think I was wanting in a new serger without having to buy a whole new one. So there's instructions for everything. It's a whole pile here. And then here's all the different feet. So there's ways to gather onto a straight piece of fabric, just like you would with a ruffler. Uh, for your sewing machine, except it works for the serger. There's different feet for sewing on trim or cording or all kinds of things that you would want to do, but you can do it now with the serger. And one of these days, I will go through this entire set of feet and show you how it works. This is the newest machine that I have. It is a Singer 15-91. The serial number places this as a 1949 machine and it comes with all of its original stuff. I just can't believe it. A dear friend gave it to me and I am thrilled that it has the instruction manual. It's got the original little screwdriver thing, all of the attachments, all of them, I mean all of them, and a button holder complete with all of the different pieces and the manual and the case and everything in it. So this machine is fabulous. Everything's perfect with it, except that the wiring is shot. I've wanted a hand cranked sewing machine for quite a while now, but the original hand crank sewing machines are actually quite expensive. Um, they are fairly easy to come by online, but you know, the shipping costs sometimes as much or more than the machine itself. And so I'm still looking for one to show up in my life. But in the meantime, this machine is a perfect candidate to convert to hand crank. And here's why. It does have a motor here uh, and a light and a plug in here but the cord that came with it was absolutely ruined. It's a 1949 machine and the cord is from 1949. The rubber on the outside of the wires was completely rotted through. The cord itself was falling apart, the plugs falling apart, and there was just no way to use it. So I suspect someday I can come up with a new cord for here and maybe turn it back into a machine that can be plugged in and used that way. But in the meantime, I purchased an adapter. So it's a fun little kit that comes with these pieces right here. It's the crank plus the replacement for this piece of the machine. Now there are two different types of adapter kits. One is for a spoke wheel that requires a different kind of crank than this machine here. And so there was a nice guy online who directed me to the correct conversion kit for this machine. And I'll link that down below. It was just available through eBay and it did not cost very much at all. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to convert this. I've actually converted another machine just to try it out. And it works just fine on that as well. All you do is you loosen the set screw and unscrew this from the machine. That's the original wheel. I'm not sure what they call this little wheel, but that's the original one. And then all you do is screw the next one in, just like that, and tighten the set screw. And then screw in the handle. Now the handle goes the opposite direction, which is good because you don't want to unloosen it when you're, when you're turning it. So the, the direction that you're going to turn in 
actually tightens that handle instead of loosening it. And that's it. That is all there is to convert an electric machine to a hand crank machine. My only complaint, I guess, if there is one, is that it is one stitch per revolution. So if you're sewing 10 stitches per inch and you have a yard of hem, <laughs> you can do the math, right? 360 turns of the wheel. I think traditional hand crank machines must have some kind of a gear in there that makes it less work for the human operator. But anyway, for now, this is perfect. Here you can see how that mechanism works. Just really easy, no problem whatsoever. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and reupholster this seat. So it is a cushion that lifts up so you have storage under the seat. Oops, there we go. So there's the old janky cord. Whenever I'm doing something like this that has a very old smell, I think about that one lyric from Michael Jackson's Thriller where Vincent Price says, the funk of 40,000 years. Maybe not 40,000. Maybe more like 72, but it is funky. Uh, it's like a combination of mothballs and must. Oh, it's nasty. Ooh, it's so nasty, you guys. Nasty. Nasty. Nasty, nasty. I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, the finished seat cushion. It's funny to me that I have been given two of the same model of sewing machine, two Singer 1591s. This one is from 1955, so it is newer than the other one, but it's not in as good of shape. It does have some rust, um, but it runs and the wiring is just fine. So I'll demonstrate that it runs here in a second, but it it's, just a little dirtier, a little less pristine than the other one. And I think because the other one's been in a cabinet and this one clearly doesn't have a cabinet at all. It came again with a, a complete set of attachments. So there we go. That's everything. And it has a button holder, but it's an older button holder than what I have with the other machine. So this is from probably the mid forties. And so it's interesting that this predates the machine, but it comes with a manual and the manual is pretty rotten and it's missing several of its pages, but you can see I've at least got some and there's plenty of instructions available online. So one of these days I'll go through this, but I'll show you how this works. I am missing a foot. It actually does not have the universal foot on it that it needs to have to sew. I've got all these other feet, but not the basic universal foot. So I need to pick one up. This machine was my friend's mother's and she didn't sew anymore. And 
as I have said so many times, when people know that you sew, they give you all kinds of stuff. And I have had very generous friends in the past uh, give things to me just because they knew I would appreciate them in a way that maybe other people in their family couldn't or wouldn't, and they just wanted to get rid of the things. So as you see, I just turned the light on. This works just fine. And here's the pedal. It's all plugged in. And you'll see it moves freely. You may be wondering what in the world am I going to do with two of essentially the same sewing machine. So I have two Singer 15-91s and they're six years apart. Why do I need two? Well, I don't. And if I hadn't been given two, I wouldn't have two. And they are slightly different. Uh, one is in the cabinet and one does not have a cabinet or a base. One has fantastic wiring and the other one, the wiring is sure to burn down my house. So, so the one that's in the cabinet that has terrible wiring, we'll take it out and we'll put it in a base and convert that one to hand crank. And then I can take it with me. Uh, it'll be more portable. I can use it, you know, on the deck, on a sunny day, whatever I want to do with it. It'll be fun. The one that has good wiring, we'll put that into the cabinet and it will just be an additional sewing machine in my room purely functional, ready to roll, just usable. So I'm going to take them both into a sewing machine repair shop and have them serviced and have them swapped around. So I found one here in St. Louis that I believe will be able to do everything I need for both machines. This is another recent addition to my sewing room. This was given to me by a friend a few weeks ago and it is a free Westinghouse. So I had never heard of that before and thank goodness for YouTube because you can find everything you need on YouTube. But basically it's a type E and it's a model ALB201. It's about the mid 1940s, although you see the ones that look exactly the same anywhere in the 1940s. So it could be late 1940s or early 1940s. But I saw a guy with a YouTube video about one that was 1944 and it looked identical to this. The person who gave this to us said that they bought it for $15 at a church rummage sale and they ended up having it serviced and then basically didn't use it. So it's been sitting around for about 20 years really just in its last service state. So it sounds a little funky. Um, I think it's just the nature of it being an older um, motor, but take a listen. And it makes a beautiful stitch. It's just, it's just a great machine. It just makes a nice sturdy stitch, just gorgeous. So I am thrilled to have this machine in my life. Um, it's nice that it works without having to do anything to it. So the only thing I had to do was buy some bobbins for it and also it takes a short needle. So this is not your typical needle. It's a size 206 by 13. It's short and the handy thing about this right here is a diagram and that's the exact length of the needle that you need for this machine. So it is shorter than a typical modern sewing machine needle but you can buy them. So I bought the needles and then you use the same bobbin that you would use for a Singer Featherweight um, 221, 222, and 301. So all of that information was available online and I was able to buy what I needed and I've got this little case all marked up and I'll just keep that with the machine. Fantastic, fantastic gift from a friend and I can't thank him enough for this. Now, as if all those machines weren't enough, I do have an antique treadle sewing machine. And the story behind this is that I saw it on Craigslist for about $60. And the person who sold it to me said that they found it in a barn and it had been damaged on top. So the veneer that would have been on top of this was peeling away. Her husband is a woodworker and he was able to strip all that veneer off and completely refinish this cabinet. And it's, you know, as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. So inside of this is a National Sewing Machine Company Paveway model, which would have been circa 1908 to 1937. So I wasn't able to find an exact date on this machine, but the National Sewing Machine Company made machines from 1879 to 1957, and the Paveway model was 1908 to 1937. The patent, 1901. So who knows how old it is, but it is a vibrating shuttle machine, and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up so you can take a look. Well, so since the last time I opened this, I mean, I knew that the 
machine, the wood was starting to come apart just a wee bit and it must have just finally had it. So I'm going to have to work on this. But anyway, you can see it's a beautiful old machine. It just needs some work in the cabinet. I did have somebody come out and put on the uh, belt and everything moves freely. You can see here, it actually moves really, really well, but it is not, um, I'm not able to use the treadle because the belt is too loose and it needs to be adjusted. And honestly, I have been scared of trying to do anything with, with this machine since then. I do have manuals for equivalent machines that show how to thread them. And this machine came with all of its parts. So I've got tons of parts in here. I have all the different shuttles, the bobbins and everything. So my plan is someday to get this one to where it's functional and then I'll be able to sew something beautiful with it. But in the meanwhile, I've got to figure out how to get this thing open and closed again because it is stuck at the moment, which is just a real drag and I'm not sure how to fix it. So that's what I get for pulling this out for the first time in probably five years. I got it back together, but I broke a sweat doing it. So where it kind of comes up and out of the machine, the wood has become loose. So one of the joints needs to be re-glued and a couple of things need to be screwed back together in there. So I am obviously not able to do anything about that at the moment. So it's a beautiful piece of furniture. Everything goes smoothly. It absolutely runs the machine um, moves freely i did like i said i had somebody out here to put on the treadle belt and she was able to get it threaded and sewing so i know it works i just haven't been able to get myself in here to work on it and then the belt fell off My friend who gave me the 1591 in the cabinet also gave me this really cool sewing box. I don't really need a sewing box, but it's so cool. I had to have it and uh, it, it was actually full of some really nifty stuff as well. So let me show you how it works. These lids pop open. This says it's a product of Norway. So that's pretty cool. And this is where you would keep your thread and stuff. Now there was a bunch of wooden spools here, which I love wooden spools and I have a little um, glass thing that I put all my wooden spools of thread in there because usually if it's a wooden spool it means it's super duper old and you wouldn't want to use it for sewing but they sure are nice to look at. There's a bunch of really cool stuff inside including a bunch of vintage notions so these are button like covered button kits and snaps and hooks and eyes so that's pretty cool. There's a pretty nifty aluminum pleating gadget so you can measure how wide you want your pleats to be or your you know your pleat spacing and use that to mark out your pleats on your fabric which is nifty a couple of pairs of good old scissors these are Wiss pinking shears and i have another set these are awesome anything with a brand name Wiss on it if you find it at a garage sale go ahead and grab it because there are people who still service these and you can get them sharpened and they work better than any other pinking shears i've ever used so um, anyway i've got these and i'll add them to my pile the cutest little taylor's ham i've ever seen in my life it says it's a press mitt junior and i'm not sure what the uh little pocket there is for but anyway it's just a cute little tailor's hem and that will definitely come in handy for small sleeves uh, for under collars just those little tiny areas that a regular pressing ham is too big for a few other notions in here but it's always a lot of fun to look and see what's inside of these sewing cases when you find them that's a tour of my sewing machines uh, I would very much like to give you a tour of my sewing room, so I'll probably slot that in in the next couple of weeks. But first I gotta put away all of these machines and all of the stuff that came with them. And that's gonna take some time because I can't lift them <laughs> very easily. So I'll need some help from my family. And hopefully I can get those two 1591s off to the repair shop this next week and have them back soon. I thought it would be really fun to maybe sew 
a 1940s dress on a 1940s era machine and so a early 1900s dress on a treadle machine from the same era. I know a lot of people do that on YouTube and I would really like to give that a try myself. So I will take you along with me as always. If you like what you see here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.